forgot to answer the question posed to me by the Argyle Dinosaur. Right, Kitty? Oh my gosh. Kitty? Uh, so they... Ah, oh, damn, so many non-binary people on YouTube these days, huh? Uh, so yeah, I mean, okay, well, they say they're not, you know, a goth, they just kind of fit in where they do, and that's cool, that's cool, <laughs> you know, you don't have to, you know, be 100% a goth to be my friend, you just have to be fabulous and freaky, because those are the people who tend to tolerate my eccentricities a lot, <laughs> the most, uh, but yeah, uh, they asked, uh, if I think it's the older people or the younger people who are a bit more gatekeepy about it. And honestly, I think young people maybe have those tendencies a bit more, uh, just because when you're really young, um, especially a teenager, you're very much, um, you're, the, the whole, like, us versus them, se um, mentality seems very attractive, and I can't tell you why I'm not a psychologist, but I do know um, from having somewhat better memories than a lot of people my age who I know that um, when I was a teenager, I was all like, you know, oh, well, it's, you know, because it was the 90s and these were the terms used then. Oh, it's the, it's the freaks versus the preps and the jocks. And, you know, we've got a, you know, we've got a, it was very, it was very much a breakfast club thing. There's a reason that film is so timeless as far as teen dramas go. I mean, you, you know, we can talk about the weird kind of misogyny in that one another day, but uh, it is th there's a reason that is so timeless a film for uh, for for young people because it is it is so true to life. And you know, the thing is, is that you know, part of maturity is realizing that it's not all us versus them. So I think a lot of young people, you know, when they discover goth, they, you know, they see something that is not only special to them and makes them feel special, but is something special enough that they want to protect and they want to, you know, keep special. And, um, and so if somebody isn't special enough, to, you know, meet whatever invented requirements that they've just made up because they're 17, um, then they will be a lot more standoffish. Whereas, you know, like, you know, I still go to the clubs, and I've gotten, you know, very quizzical, you know, responses from people who, on Grinder because old guys on Grinder, right? Uh, I don't even have my age on Grinder, but eventually it comes up if I'm, you know, like, actually having a discussion with somebody who's like, don't you feel, like, really out of place and extra old being, you know, your age and going to nightclubs? And I'm like, why would I? This is what I do. This is the music I like. Uh, I don't have any office people to impress the next day, and I don't care. I don't care. I stopped caring a long time ago, so... <laughs> um... But no, like when you go to the cl when you go to the goth nights, uh, at least in Det you know what? Even when I lived in Los Angeles, uh, hundred years ago at this point, uh, when I lived in Los Angeles, the people who were always the most uh, eager to talk to new people were a lot of the older people, which is probably why I had a couple friends who thought I was definitely older than twenty two at the time. So <laughs> that might have contributed to it. That and my taste in music is about 10 years older than most people my age, uh, or at least tense in that direction. Mm, especially for somebody born and raised in the States. I had a conversation one time, you know, revolving around T-Rex, where I was trying to convince my friend F that, you know, no, really, I'm 22. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you know, what purpose would I have to get fake ID to make me look that much younger? You know, like, I, I, I already get into the club with my eye. It's not like, you know, but whatever. That's, that's, that's old people nonsense. But, you know, um, so I've noticed, like, you know, at the clubs, at a golf club, at a punk club, um, you know, at the punk concerts and everything, like, I've gone to go see Gogol Bordello uh, with my friend Elizabeth, who is a good... Ah, uh, she's almost 10 years older than me. 
Uh, and I'm not quite exactly sure how many years older, but almost 10. I, that's, that's a fair assessment. Uh, so yeah, I've gone out to see Gogol Berdella with her and yeah, and, and we, we are so eagerly, like, her more than me, because like I said, she's a bit older than me and she is so eager to you know, like welcome like the young people that she sees and, um, and of course, you know, Gogol Berdello, I mean, okay, they're not the newest band in the world. They've been around at least 15 years, I want to say. But, you know, we see young people getting into this music that is, you know, like, not quite as old as you'd expect, like, you know, old farts, like, going on 40 like myself and, you know, much closer to 50 like herself. You know, so it's not quite that old, but it's like, you know, just old enough that, you know, we're always so happy to see, you know, like, the young people there. Like, you know, if, oh, God, yeah, yeah, I think that was an 18-plus show. So we see people 18, 19, 20 years old, they've got the X's on their hands, and we're pretty sure at least one of them was 17 and just, like, you know, somehow got a convincing enough fake to get in, you know, somehow, but, um, you know, but, you know, as long as I've got the X on the hand, we're just like, yeah, we did, we did cockamamie shit like that when we were teenagers, too. But that's an, another story for another time. It's like, so, you know, and the young people, they, I don't know, sometimes younger people reacting to older people at the clubs, especially like a goth and punk club, uh, you know, unless it is specifically an old school night. That's another, that's another thing. But, you know, at the goth and the punk clubs, uh, young people seem to, like, have very mixed reactions. They either love seeing older people there, or they're almost offended that old people still go out <laughs> and have fun and have a blast. Like, you know, it's like the realization that somebody can be as old as your parents and love the Ramones. It's just like, like, no, no, like, we did not outgrow the Ramones, you know, and, you know, you're... Yeah, we never did. You can't outgrow the Ramones. Really. It's like, they're so timeless. They are. They are. So I think, you know, like when you go out to the clubs, especially if you're still going to clubs at my age or Elizabeth's age or uh, Gothic Soulflower's age or Skullgirl's age or even the Kilted Goth's age. And I've got a couple friends in the Metro Detroit area. They don't go out quite as much, but... Ben is almost as old as uh, as the Kilted Goth, and Marie is a bit younger than him, but also um, a bit more uh, mobility challenged than he, Ben. But you know, so they've got a, you know that's that's their main reason they don't go out quite as much as they used to. But you know, they still make an effort to go out a couple times a year and you know like see the concerts and you know especially when it's older bands coming around. But um, but yeah, they uh, they still go out, and um, the most recent ex, uh, he was just so he was just so happy to see people, you know, uh, Ben and Marie's age going out to uh, uh, actually like it was Convergence twenty four in Detroit last year, and you know I've got my thoughts about Isaac, but it just warmed my heart to see that he was just so in awe of older people who still go out. And we're very welcoming to him. And, you know, and that's the thing about the Convergence crowd is like we're getting a bit older, but we always try to bring new, newer, younger people in. And we are so welcoming of the older pe of the younger people. <laughs> of course, we're welcoming of the older people. We know them. <laughs> We've known them for decades. <laughs> Some of us. And and yeah, so like when you, you know, and I've noticed like the older people in goth, in punk, uh, in industrial clubs, you know, we are tend to be the more welcoming ones whereas younger people they're still trying to figure themselves out that's the thing is like you're when you're still trying to figure yourself out um you're going to be a little bit shyer about things and maybe not quite as you know um eager to meet you know newer younger people you know um much less newer older people right so, you know, and I think it's the younger people, you know, who get very excited about something, and so they become very protective, which is, which is nice, which is nice. That's, you know, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I'm saying that um, it's, it's something that you got to learn to temper, and I think for a lot of people, it's something that, you know, you just have to learn as you age. So I went totally rambling and... It's probably a really convoluted answer, but, you know, I think the older people, 
you know, are a lot more welcoming in some respects. And, you know, but we, we love the younger people. Even when the younger people can be a bit more standoffish and a bit more, you know, with the, with the thumb going, you know, where, where it's about to, where they're going to demonetize me if I said, if I say the swears. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, 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 you know when, when they're being all, like, you know, nitpicky about genre and all of that, because, you know, like, as a 90s goth from the Midwest, I mean, yeah, I had summers, you know, in London, but the school year was in the Midwest, and, you know, and Typo Negative was like, I've got a whole video coming about Typo Negative and its importance to, you know, 90s goths, but, um, but yeah, like, you know, you, yeah, like, us older people were just like, you know, Typo Negative, you know, they've been around forever, they, you know, and Peter Steele was a champion of, you know, goth music in the 90s, so, like, you know, I see younger people saying, oh, well, Typo Negative is not goth, and I'm just like, they're, 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 they're dark enough, and, you know, Peter Steele himself was a goth, so, you know, and he loved goth music and all of that, but, you know, so, yeah, I think younger people get really excited about something, and when they get really excited about something, they want to hold it close so that it feels special, and they can get very protective of what they feel is special, and because it makes them feel special to, you know, have something to be that passionate and protective about. And it's not because us older people are less passionate and less protective. Oh, Angela will, you know, that, that Snowy Lothar video that, you know, kind of, you know, brought her to a lot of people's attentions on YouTube. Uh, she is, she can be very protective about, uh, about goth and the gothic subculture. And that's the thing is like, you know, we do not become less passionate and less protective. We just, you know, we just find our footing and we become more comfortable in ourselves. And, um, and, you know, we just, you know, we're not less passionate. We're not less protective. We're just, less stupid <laughs> about it, you know? And it's okay. Like, you can, you can be a little, you can be a little, y you can be a little much when you're young. We're just... <laughs> okay, okay. Let me try to edit this into a reasonable amount of time. All right.